Hi, I'm Peter Rose, founder of Longwood Currency Trading. Kind of a follow-up to my last video, I quit, and you, and so should you, uh, because uh, <laughs> since putting that video out, I've had uh, quite a few emails uh, from folks going, well, how did it work out? What happened? <laughs> did you lose your ass or what, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so uh, I'd just like to recap on that. So if you have no interest in that story, save yourself some time, cut out, and go. And go. But before I get on with my video, um, I had also posted uh, a picture of our new, uh, well, it's, I had a snow depth chair out there to, to calculate the depth of the snow, and uh, that disintegrated, and my wife bought me a uh, uh, cast iron or wrought iron uh, pole, it's, uh, it sticks out of the ground, and it has little wings on it, and it measures in inches how much snow is there. So I don't have a snow depth chair anymore, but I took a picture of... Um, my gloves laying out there on the grass, and I was pounding the uh, pounding the new snow depth gauge into the ground, and everything was green and everything was okay. However, uh, it has snowed. We've had two days of snow. I just got in from shoveling. Uh, I got a metal roof, and so the stuff comes flying off because it's kind of wet. I'm going to shovel that off, and I took a picture of the uh, snow depth gauge in the snow, and we've got about four inches. We actually got probably five or five and a half, but it's been really wet. And so uh, that's the weather report, early December 2023 from New Hampshire. <laughs> okay. So, um, in the last video, I had recounted, because of my interest in economics and fundamentals and all that other kind of stuff, I get biased. I get an opinion. And we save opinions for movie reviews and not for trading. And unfortunately, I fell prey to that. <clears throat> Last Friday, um, uh, when I formed, when I recorded that uh, uh, video, I was recounting a trade that I had got into on Friday. I was up a couple of thousand dollars, and then I got this stupid fucking opinion in my head, and was jockeying around and doing a bunch of trades, trying to get position and trying to get set up for some financial announcements that were coming out that I was convinced was going to create. XYZ to happen. And so I had my position that I was putting on trying to set that up. And in the midst of all that, volatility increased and I went from $2,000 up to about $680. And, um, and, then I, and then everything seemed to settle down. I was ready to go. I got my positions in there, um, all set up, stage orders, ready to go. And boom, 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 boom. They, they all go off. And um, as soon as the news came out and the um, price was just kind of not moving and I thought well that's kind of strange because usually uh, in any kind of uh, economic news and these weren't really big numbers but they were supportive of uh, for example supportive of what would go on on a non-farm payroll or interest rate discussion or whatever CPI and, and uh, JOTS report, that JOLTS report that's what was what was what we were working at. In any event, um, it, the price it was like I said was just kind of stagnant for a while, and then it just went kapushush, totally in the opposite direction of where it should have gone. Now, where it should have gone is where it should go, but we don't know when. I don't know when. I'm pretty good at picking out where it should go, but I, I'm, I, I can't, I, I'm like everybody else, I, I, I don't know when that's going to happen. And because of my interest in economics, it's very difficult for me to step back from the when part, because there's, in, in, in any Forex trade situation, there's two versions of the when. There's two, uh, two things that you have to consider when you're thinking about what, when you're going to do something. You know, you have the what you need to do, how you need to do it, and then when do you do that? And in, in Forex trading, because of the dynamics of the market, there's two issues of that when. And if you happen to have a rabid interest like I do in economics and stuff and fundamentals and blah, 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 the borderline between those two whens be, begins to blur. I, I'd have to sit down and uh, explain it better. But if you've been trading and uh, you have any knowledge of the market, you kind of get a drift of what I'm talking about. If you're not trading very much and you don't understand all this stuff, 
it's meaningless to you. It's a good story though. So there I am and price is moving uh, all of a sudden just radically against me <coughs> in quote the wrong direction. As it turned out on reflection, the reason for the dynamic movement in the opposite direction to where I thought it should go was because so many people had pending orders and got caught on the wrong side of that that they were scrambling for the exit doors and getting out. And as they were getting out, that was encouraging the institutional traders who are looking for liquidity to go in and, and, and further feature that. And so I, I think just went crazy on Friday and I just thought, well, I'll just, uh, and then the market closed. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll just do a carry trade and I'll see what happen, s happens Sunday afternoon at five o'clock on East Coast US um, when the market opens back up again and then on Monday, uh, whether this stuff settles back or not. Sunday, uh, the market opened up, it chattered around for a while, and then it continued off. And I thought, oh my God, I was like 10 grand down at one point. Um, and I had said on Friday <clears throat> that although I was uh, uh, about six grand down, I thought when, when, um, when the market closed, I thought that things would stabilize and I could get out of the stupid trade because I was stupid and maybe take a $4,000 hit. So that's where that video uh, had come to. And I had said um, in that last video that when uh, Monday came around, price did uh, come back and it went from about that 10 grand level down to about $5,500 uh, against me, which is a big move, but I'm trading fairly big size. And so from a pip standpoint, it's not uh, outrageous. And then it continued to move in my favor and it went to 4,000, 3,000, 2,000. And I'm moving in the right direction and not to repeat what I went through last time, but I did close the trade short of where my profit target, I had moved my profit target up to a $2,800 level from a very <coughs> aggressive profit target that I just said, I, I'm tired of this trade. I carried it over the weekend. I just don't want to be in it. So I'll, I'll set this um, um, level at $2,800 in dollars, $2,800. Um, and I would be more than happy with that. And so I'm watching this trade on, on, on Monday and I just, it, 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 it went to $1,500 in my favor and then it was $400 in my favor, it went $1,800 in my favor, it went to $300 in my favor, it was jockeying up all over the place. It hit $1,500 in my favor, I hit, I hit the close all button and I'm out. So the long and the short of the thing is that even though the, the price went drastically against me, um, it actually turned around and came back to the point where I made $1,500 on the trade. So I knew what was going to happen, or I suspected from a probabilistic st standpoint what was going to happen, but I got the win part, the timing of it, wrong, drastically wrong. And so... Um, when the price began to come back, I didn't want to invest any more money into the, into the trade. If I was going to lose it, I, that's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to try to work my way out of the trade and bring my average up a little bit more so I could make more. I, I just didn't want to get involved in that. I was just going to get out. I would have got out at $300 profit, but there was so much momentum in the price at that particular time and so much volatility, I thought, well, I'm just going to stand here and wait and watch this thing on the one minute chart. And uh, when it starts to chatter, psh, I'll go up. And that's what I did. I took the $1,500 win and I got out. Um, price did later in the day go and uh, down, uh, to the point where my $2,800 limit uh, close would have been. So I missed out on um, you know, a thousand bucks or something like that. Um, but that's okay. 
I mean, if you take the amount of money that I made and divide that by the amount of money that I had at risk, I got, you know, six tenths of a percent on my risk. Well, that's pretty good if you could do that uh, a week. If you could do a half a percent a week, you're, you're making 2% a month, that's 24% on your money a year, and that's just on a half a percent, if you know what you're doing and you know how to calculate these things. The reason for the video, it, it, folks were wondering, well, what, what happens after the fact? What happens after you, you go through uh, that particular process? And the reason for the video was, I have to get this fundamental stuff out of my head. It isn't so much that I have to get the economics and the fundamentals and all that stuff out of my head because I can't. That's part of my interest. That's part of my makeup. That's, I, mean, I mean, you know, if you're interested in dogs, you're not going to change your mind just because dogs shed. You know, you're interested in carrots farming. Uh, you're interested in that. And uh, just because you decide that uh, uh, you're, you're going to move somewhere where it's arid and they don't grow carrots, that's going to change your mind about being interested in carrots. And it, so there's no psychological magic juju uh, that I'm going to be able to do or counseling that I can have <laughs> or a magic pill that I can take that eradicates uh, fundamentals and economic interest from me as a person. And so what I do, and, and I, I get wrapped up. My issue is I can't get wrapped up, but I can still have the interest because my rules, in fact, do encompass a methodology for overcoming mental and psychological issues in trading, which all come around damaging your risk management profile. Risk management is at the heart of everything that we do, and yet what I've done is I've solved all those risk management problems, so I don't have those in any phase of the life cycle of a currency position. I was a software engineer for 33 years, and I def defined the life cycle of a currency position, entry analysis, position management, and exit methodology as I've gone on ad nauseum in many of my videos. But the rules that I have are not risk management rules because I've already taken care of that as the base of the framework of my trading plan. Everybody else is risk management all the time. Well, I think you're crazy because you're thinking about the wrong thing. There's other things that you need to think about and concern yourself with and risk management is the last thing because it's the first thing that you need to think about. And so that's that's what everybody is asking me is, well, how do you come back from that huge loss that you snuck out of and you got this? Well, I know what caused that, and I've got the solution to it. I, chose, I simply chose not to follow my rules at that particular time. I could have got out, gotten out of that trade at an appropriate time or not got into it and closed the day out with a $2,000 gain. But my trading plan calls for me looking for different conditions in the market which would indicate a movement that's probabilistically likely to be X size. And if it hits X size, I'm going to, I want to be in. I want to be in. I want to trade. And uh, Maybe I'll lose. Maybe I'll win or whatever. On a per transaction basis, in other words, when I'm scrambling and trying to, because I'll make uh, sometimes um, so two or three or four uh, stages, tr transactions into the position, and I may close that out two or three times, um, taking a couple of pips here or losing four pips there, and just jockeying for position until price finally settles down. I'm not one for putting a position in and it goes against me and I'm going to add negatively to it. I just think that the math of that doesn't work. If you're a really experienced trader, you can make that work, but if you're not an experienced trader, I wouldn't do that on a bet. It's called averaging down, and, and it's the kiss of death. However, when you get jammed up, you can work your way out of a bad position as long as you understand the rest of the stuff that goes with it. And so for me to take on a position <coughs> that's going to go underwater, I don't mind an underwater position two, three times my risk. 
because on a transaction basis, I understand I'm a solid 60-40 on a transaction basis, 60-40 trader. Um, but my trading as all in, all out, like for example, if I'm scalping, um, I'm about a 70-30 trader on that. However, on a per day basis, I'm about an 85%. In other words, 85% of the days that I trade, I'm successful. I've got I've got a winning I've got a winning trade. Even though within that day trading basis, I might be a 65 um, uh, uh, winning trader. I have 65% or 60 40, 70 30, somewhere in the middle. You get it, right? Um, the, the caution is I'm doing this video and trying to address um, folks that are trading uh, low to mid five figure accounts and you're running into these situations where <clears throat> you're getting ready to start staging and all that and again I, in a low five figure account I don't think you should be staging and if you say oh well you know I'm trading at 200 to 1 I didn't even want to talk to you because that's the, the antithesis of risk management as far as I'm concerned. You should be trading at no more than 50 to 1, which is uh, the limits that most reasonable brokerages are going to put on you. The reason a lot of these other brokers will give you 200 to 1 leverage, a 500 to 1 leverage, is they know you're going to lose. They know most of you are going to lose. 90% of you are going to lose. And who makes the money? They make the money because they're taking the other side of your trade. Don't you understand that? The broker's taking the other side of your trade, and they're giving you 200 to 1, which is like handing you a loaded gun and telling you to kill yourself because the broker has a life insurance policy on you. You just have to wake up to this stuff. I got people criticizing me for the way that I trade. I'm trading at 10 to 1, for Christ's sake, and you're going to criticize me. I don't think you should be criticizing me because I'm making money. So, however, when I don't follow my rules, I take a bad hit, and I've taken several bad hits. But the thrust of the story of this particular trade that I was in was not to regale you with the fact I made $1,500 after being underwater so badly over the weekend on a carry, but the fact that, that if you do have interest in um, economics and fundamentals and all that other stuff, that's great. Study the market. It's a wonderful market to study. It's a lot of fun. But just don't try to apply that stuff to your trading because you can't. You cannot compete, <clears throat> as I said in the last video, with a, with a room full of uh, PhDs in economics that are, try, that are uh, plotting the bank strategy out for tomorrow's NFP. You, 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 can't, you can't work through that. You don't have the simulation. You don't have the money behind you. Remember, the banks aren't trading uh, levered up. They're trading cash on cash. So uh, their risk is far more manageable than what we're doing, even, even at low leverage. If you're trading using economics and fundamentals and, God forbid, indicators, the leverage is going to work against you because you're going to be wrapped up in thinking that the indicator is going to tell you what to do or the results of the non-form payroll are going to tell you what you should be doing. And they don't. Because the Forex market is different than the stock market. It behaves differently to news and information and stuff. Boy, if you don't understand that, then no wonder you're getting kind of messed up in, in how you're viewing the, the um, not-so-good results that you're having. Listen to my videos, because I try to talk with folks that are at that, that low to mid-five-figure account size that are experiencing these problems and issues. If you're trading many accounts or a couple of full lots, you're not experiencing shit because you're trading for dollars and you're trying to push the envelope and you're really not learning anything. I'm sorry, that's just the way that it is. You could listen to all these guys that are out there, trade a small account, make it a big account. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, fine. That's, that's going to work out real good for you. Um, my caution to those of you who are rationally trying to improve your skill is to be very careful about letting your bias toward um, news and information and economic theory blind you to the what's going on with the price action right now. 
again, I want to focus on that time when those, those um, economic results came out and price spiked 50 pips in the di opposite direction to where anybody would have thought that that, that that was going to happen. And because it was spiking like that, everybody was going for the exits because they were on the wrong side of it, because they had an opinion. I was on the wrong side of it, but I have more experience and I can work my way out of some of those situations. And I don't hit those situations very often. And when I don't hit those situations and I follow my rules, I can make a lot of money. So I'm, I'm, I'm constantly probing the market looking for weaknesses. You shouldn't be probing the market. You don't have the money to do that and possibly the experience either. And so back off of all that stuff and, and think about what a reasonable trading plan under reasonable guidelines should look like. And if you have any questions about it, send me an email and um, I'd, I'd be happy to, to try to discuss it with you somehow. In any event, I quit uh, with those opinions and stuff. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna get involved in that anymore. I'm not saying that I won't get sucked into it, but I'm gonna be very, very cautious not to say, oh, non-farm payrolls are coming out and so I should probably do this. Uh-uh, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I hope. Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Have a great day and have a great trading day.